36 and yeah, 36 and three quarters. Three quarters, yeah, almost, eh, almost, 36. almost 36. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, we're participating in this warm water musky mortality study today, and uh, Santa's just landed the second fish of the morning, and we got a transmitter fish. So uh, it's, you can see here, it's got a pink loop tag in its back, right? And uh, I'll turn the fish over. You can see right there. Whoop, you can see right there. She's got stitches. That's where the transmitter is at. So we're gonna get a quick measurement, quick photo, just like we normally would do if we caught this fish fishing, and then release her. And uh, for the next week, the grad student biologist will track this fish and see what happens. If she starts kicking, just give her a nice push. Wild to revive in this hot water. There she goes. Oh, that's weird. Good, healthy release. See what happens this week. Good job, man. Thank you. <laughs> Hey all, I'm Corey Bauerlein, I'm a graduate student at Coastal Carolina University here at the Hunting Creek Boat Ramp in Big Island, Virginia on the James River. Uh, today we went out and we tried to catch a few musky for our musky mortality project. And what we're doing is we are going out and tracking muskies that we have tagged with little radio tags and surgically implanted in their bellies. Um, and we're tracking them, trying to figure out whether they are surviving or dying post-release uh, during an angling event. We're also trying to separate that from what potentially natural deaths are occurring and trying to figure out what proportion of fish are going out and swimming off and dying post-release. Um, so what that entails is us going out with a radio receiver and tracking down where these fish are. So we can locate these fish using this receiver and track their position. If they move upstream, downstream, we know that they're alive, or if they sit in the same location over a certain period of time, potentially dead, and then we um, stick a camera down, try to figure out if the fish is there, or potentially, just like the other day, we went scuba diving because uh, we did have one fish that did die that was returned to us from another angler, and uh, we tried to locate the tag down there. So that's pretty much our day-to-day -day operations. So we focus on the area here at Hunting Creek, and then there's another dam down below that we fish at and track down at, which is the, the Reed Creek boat ramp. Um, we actually have had fish move from down here all the way down to Monacan Park, which is further down the river, uh, traveled over like two, three dams. We have one fish that was down at the Reed Creek that we released uh, that traveled all the way down to downtown Lynchburg. But um, we have a total of 45 fish tag. Of those 45 fish, we have been able to locate 39. So we have six that are currently MIA. But we're still in the process of trying to find them. But we locate each of those fish weekly and we're able to track them down. Um, of the 45 fish, we have had three caught on rod and reel and then one returned that was uh, dead from natural causes, potentially. Uh, we're still in the process of investigating that. Uh, so we're trying to get about half of those. So we need probably another 20 or so, trying to maximize our total angling output to be able to tell whether this is actually going on. Um, but so far we have 16 fish that are up here in the Hunting Creek section. We have 13 fish down in Reed Creek, and down below that we have another 10 across another three to four pools. So that's pretty much what we have at the moment. Still in process of going through this. We're going to be here through September. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I can give you my email. And then uh, we will also have a website up here soon. That way we can keep everybody up to date on fish that are caught, where they're at, that sort of deal.